Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching a brand new edition of Policy Watch with me, Frank Razan Pereira. Bankers on Wednesday said that the Reserve Bank's decision to hike policy rate by 25 basis points will anchor inflationary expectations and policy rate transmission would happen in the coming days. Anticipating policy rate hike, many big lenders including SBI, ICICI Bank and HDFC Bank have already increased their benchmark lending rate by up to 0.1%. In the second bi-monthly monetary policy announcement for the current fiscal, RBI for the first time in four and a half years raised the key interest rate by 25 basis points to 6.25%. The six-member monetary policy committee headed by RBI Governor Urjit Patel also decided to retain projection of GDP growth for 2018-19 at 7.4% with risk evenly balanced around this number. In our first segment of Policy Watch today, we will analyze the RBI monetary policy. Joining me on the program today are Nitin Desai, former Chief Economic Advisor to the Government of India and A.K. Bhattacharya, Editorial Director of the Business Standard. Thank you to both my guests for joining me on this edition of Policy Watch. Mr. Desai, I'd like to begin with you first. What was uh, the reason for which the RBI raised the uh, key lending rates at 25 basis well, points? The reasons that they have given, as they appear now, though we should wait for the minutes, is that there is some uh, uptake in inflation numbers, 4.8, 4.9. The target is, of course, 4. And there's some reference in their statements to the belief that private consumption expenditure is increasing. I must say I was a little surprised hmm. because if you look at the numbers which have come out in the uh, for 2017-18 in the provisional estimates, none of them show an escalation in demand growth relative to the previous year, 16-17. You take year-on-year -year growth, every single one of them is down. Uh, uh, private expenditure, 7.3, 6.6. Uh, government expenditure, 12.2. This uh, last year, 10.9. Yeah. Capital formation, 10.1, down to 7.6. And the uh, current account deficit is larger, which is also deflationary. The only thing that they seem to have fastened on is that between the estimates CSO had given at the end of February and the estimate it has given at the end of May, the increase in private consumption, private consumption expenditure has gone up from 6.1 to 6.6. Uh, I don't think that the uptick in inflation that we're seeing now is necessarily demand pull. Hmm. After all, they themselves talk about the cost push element coming from crude oil prices, the general increase in commodity prices. And I just wonder whether this is the right time for an increase in interest rates at a time when the economy seems to be coming out of relative, of every investment seems to be slowly picking up. And maybe some spending is also picking up. So do you up. think that the committee should have waited till August then? Well, I would have said that I would have waited uh, for another quarter before jumping to this conclusion. But the fact is, it is unanimous. Yes, it is so unanimous. I would, it yeah. is unanimous. No, there's no, nobody has dissented from that view. So I wonder well, what the reasoning was, and it is not all obvious, but looking at the numbers, I don't see enough evidence of exceptional demand growth to just, uh, justify a 25 basis, bits. 20, 25 basis point increase now. Uh, and I don't see that in the credit offtake. Sure. Also, sure. Mr. Bhattacharya, yeah. Mr. Desai said that he was surprised. He, he hoped that, you know, they'd have waited for another quarter. Were you surprised as well? No, I was also surprised. But uh, I thought uh, some answer uh, was available uh, from what the RBI governor uh, wrote in a way unusual uh, development uh, just about uh, two days on 3rd of June, he wrote a, an, an edit page article in the Financial Times and advising the Fed that its wind down process, the winding down of the balance sheet process should be undertaken in a manner that it doesn't jolt the emerging market economies. Now, this was an unusual move by a central bank governor advising the governor of another central bank uh, to, uh, to take into account that what is uh, happening in emerging market economies should be their concern as well. Raghuram Rajan also talked about it, but Urjit Patel, the current central bank governor, has thought it fit to write a piece in a newspaper. 
Now, why I am raising this issue is because I feel that the decision to raise 25 basis points repo rate is linked not so much to the Indian economy, but to the fears that there may be a money pull out, flow out of the economy into the US, the developed market economies. I think this is essentially to stem that flow that in case there are some fears of an outflow on account of a speedier winding down of the US Fed balance sheet, then this will act as a deterrent. Especially so, when the US economy is doing well. Doing well. So therefore, I, I see that this is a, this is a policy move uh, which is aimed at not, not so much uh, uh, at the domestic economy as to, to, uh, to address the fears of a flow outflow of, of uh, resources from the Indian economy back to the US markets. Now, which is why I find the, the stance that the Monetary Policy Committee has taken very interesting that you have raised the interest rate by 25 basis points, but contrary to the earlier expectation that you will go a little hawkish on your stance, you actually have retained a neutral stance. Mm. In other words, that you have kept all your options open and you don't want to do anything more unless some new data points come and which, 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 which go you to do something more or maybe something less. So my, my, uh, my uh, short answer to your question is that yes, I was surprised, but the surprise, the answer to the surprise has to be found not in the Indian economy, but what is happening to the global economy. Sure. You know, yes, Mr. Desai. I, this is, uh, he's probably quite right. And I, uh, that I, I, we have had an outflow out of the debt market of foreign money over the past uh, few months. Few months, yeah. And that is largely because of the narrowing of the interest differential. And this will certainly help in that. What I would say is that it clearly goes beyond the terms of reference of the Monetary Policy <laughs> Committee, which was meant to look at it. This was always a mistake. Hmm. To say that the only job of the interest rate is to uh, 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 address Target Indian inflation. prices. Yes, and that was, I have always argued that basically you need a more multidimensional approach to assignment here. So, and that's so, the international so can we expect the scope of the RBI widening in the near future? Then? No, it's not a question of why it has to be done. My point is generally you cannot neglect the external dimension. Whether you're looking at the fiscal deficit or whether you're looking at interest rates, what you do cannot be calibrated only on the basis of what is happening in the Indian economy because it has an impact on foreign flows. And of course, it is true. Trade flows are largely determined by exchange rate variations, etc. But capital flows are determined by these factors. Mm. And I have always argued that basically you have to take in more complex view looking at internal and external balance together. In which case, if they have done it for this reason, and if that's what the minutes show, I would strongly urge the government to modify the terms of reference of the Monetary Policy Committee mm. to say that they must also look at the compulsions of external balance along with what is happening uh, domestically. Yeah. On the neutral stance, uh, in theory it means that one quarter later, if okay. they, they could again bring it down by 25 basis points. Yes. But I hope they don't do a yo-yo function thing with the interest rates. That is why I would have waited three quarters. Because you can't keep changing it 25 basis points up this quarter, 25 basis points down next quarter, etc. That sort of thing is not possible because uh, you, know, you can't adjust landing rates so far. far. I hope that uh, I was hoping that they would wait for a quarter, but I think maybe it's right that they were worried of, about the outflow and they felt they had to do this now. So it was inevitable then. Yeah. I would say that uh, it was, to some extent, it was unavoidable. Okay. And uh, in, in fact, we have been saying some of us have been saying this for some time. It happened, in fact, on this program a little while, some while ago, when one gentleman was arguing we should reduce interest rates. I said, please, for God's sake, don't do that. You'll face a real problem on the external front if you do mm -hmm. that. So I wouldn't be too entirely unhappy, but it will be a, there will be a price. Okay, there will be a price. And what is the price, Mr. Bhattacharya? Because Mr. Desai, in his opening uh, remarks, suggested that the economy has just started picking up and maybe it was not the right time to, to hike the rates at this point in time. What impact is it going to have on the economy? Well, you know, it will, it will make uh, economic activities a little more costly. 
Uh, so therefore, uh, uh, there were a lot of suggestions uh, sent out uh, to the Monetary Policy Committee members in the run-up to the policy that probably, uh, 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 you know, a, a rise in the interest rate, the repo rate, could wait for a couple of more uh, monetary policy reviews. Uh, but uh, so therefore, uh, already you have seen that the lending rates uh, have gone up. Uh, it will also affect the EMIs of the people. So. So uh, at a time when the economy was probably, uh, you know, uh, on a uh, on, on a recovery mode, uh, you instead of giving it a push, uh, you have worry, worried about inflationary potential in the economy. That is the official reason. But as I as I, I believe that the, the real reason is not what is happening here. The real reason is what is happening in the U.S. Uh, having said that, uh, Dr. Desai raised a very, very interesting point, uh, which is uh, that is it time to change the terms of reference for the Monetary Policy Committee? Uh, because uh, this narrow focus, you know, the Arjun-like, you know, targeting on inflation is probably something that needs to be looked at again. Uh, but the challenge there is that you already have changed the law and uh, you have made by law uh, a mandate for the Monetary Policy Committee to stick to an uh, inflation range between two and six, and the being that lower and the upper band. But I think it's important that the Monetary Policy Committee needs to be more concerned about just not just about inflation, but uh, or a variety of other factors in the economy uh, which are equally vital. Sure. You know, Mr. They said the MPC usually meets for two days. This time around, it was three days. What was the reason behind that? Well, maybe the Reserve Bank needed an extra day to persuade the non-official members, <laughs> for all I know. But one thing in his world, I think they've tried to see, uh, soften the blow a little by certain other measures, mm -hmm. which, are, which are easing access to credit, you know, in housing, for small industries, and so on. So my guess is that they're probably aware that uh, they should not, uh, that they, they should do something to prevent this hitting the uh, underlying trend of revival in investment to, uh, and so they've done certain other things. But let us see, let us see what the minutes show. But ideally I would say that it's time to start looking at macroeconomic policy in India in terms which combine internal and external balance. We are a very open economy. Trade as a proportion of our GDP is very high. So close to, I think, for, more than 40 percent now, yeah, uh, more, more than 40 percent. And our capital flow side is also very open. Our stock markets are heavily influenced by outside. So I'd say the message from this is have a closer look uh, at what you're doing in the Monetary Policy Committee. Sure. And, 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 the, and the, the pointer in this policy is the stance that the RBI Monetary Policy Committee has taken, which is a neutral stance, which means that technically and 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 without undermining its credibility, the Monetary Policy Committee can can move either way. And as the market now expects that the the current financial year they had already um, built into the in the expectations uh, psychology a 50 basis points increase in the in the in the repo rate in the current financial year. So 25 basis points gone. So all that you can look forward to is another 25 basis points, which market might, believes that it might come in the August policy or maybe later. Uh, but the neutral stance has given some comfort to the markets that, listen, I mean, RBI may have raised 75 basis points rate, but its stance is not hawkish. It sure. can move either way. It can even reduce the rates. Indeed. All right, on that note then, we'll have to slip into a short break. On the other side of this break, we'll talk about uh, SEBI's uh, uh, leak of data probe. Do stay tuned. Plastic is not a problem. When the human factor only, we don't have proper garbage culture. Industry produces and market it and forget it. Consumers use it and forget it. And the corporation collects it, dumps it, forget it. I used to say, 
careless and cardless we are careless in the respect we are careless about the plastic let us try to use it properly we will definitely use a better world and we don't have any problem of plastic Similarly, and this environment, let us not worry about the plastic. There's technology available. Let us try to use it and try to develop in a better atmosphere. Watch Eureka special episode with the Dr. R. Vasudevan, the plastic man of India, and Dean in Thyagarajar Engineering College in Madurai, only on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. You're watching Policy Watch with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. SEBI will soon take action against some market operators and senior staff members of about a dozen listed blue chip firms for their alleged involvement in leak of price sensitive information through WhatsApp. The companies may also face censure action by the market watchdog for alleged lapses in safeguard mechanism to check leak of unpublished price sensitive information, including financial results before they were made public for all investors. The regulator is close to completing its probe into the matter, including for suspected unlawful gains through insider trading on the basis of leaked information and is collating the details it had sought from all concerned companies. In our next segment of Policy Watch, we will analyze how to deal with price sensitive information. Still with me on the program are Nitin Desai, former Chief Economic Advisor to the Government of India and A.K. Bhattacharya, Editorial Director of the Business Standard. Mr. Bhattacharya, so what is SEBI's probe all about? Well, you know, uh, there are two aspects that we need to be conscious of. One is uh, the sensitive information about uh, any company which is a listed entity on the stock exchanges being shared uh, with uh, a few uh, privileged uh, shareholders or non-shareholders even uh, so that they can manipulate the market or play in the market to their benefits. So that's uh, something that SEBI is looking into it because in this case uh, it seems uh, that uh, um, the, the quarterly results of these companies, which are more or less the same as which finally got announced uh, on the scheduled day and made public to the stock exchanges, were available to some individuals, groups beforehand. of individuals beforehand. So that's something which is a strict no-no under any stock market regulation. Uh, and SEBI uh, is actually uh, should have taken action against such uh, instances yesterday, in my view. Why, uh, uh, why even uh, late. talk about it? Why yes. is it late? In my view, they are already late because such uh, their actions actually uh, uh, shake the confidence of the investors, the shareholders in the company. So, therefore, uh, that's one aspect. The second aspect is that whether the law is. Uh, strong enough and foolproof to tackle sharing of such information on a device like WhatsApp. Hmm. Now, WhatsApp, as we know, uh, can claim uh, uh, protection under the privacy rules. That one, that it is a, a, a closed user group, so it is not uh, as uh, is not comparable to something being made public through an email or through an advertisement or through a press conference. So it is something that you and I or uh, Dr. Desai are sharing in a certain closed group forum. Uh, and the second element is that whether the SEBI is within its powers or does it have the requisite access to ask WhatsApp to make public that information. that information. Now, as you know, that WhatsApp is now part of the huge global giant called Facebook. Now, WhatsApp's data remains encrypted. WhatsApp data remains virtually inaccessible to the Indian government authorities. Right. Now, under these circumstances, so the, the first question that I raised is easy to resolve. That any company sharing information which is class sensitive and classified to a group of uh, people before it is publicly shared is something that should be immediately be acted on. Right. But the second part, if it is done through a forum like WhatsApp, through a closed user group, how do you tackle it? How does the closed user group 
has a different protection under the law and second whether the SEBI, the market regulator has access or be able to enforce these orders on a on a company like WhatsApp which is now part of a global uh, sure. t technology giant Facebook. Sure, the so second problem the is extremely complex. complex. You know, uh, Mr. Desai, how do we deal with this problem? I would say first, uh, the starting point uh, to me should be SEBI should regularly monitor exceptional transactions. There are always transactions taking place. Yes. But whenever I get something exceptional, then it's worth probing what lies behind this. Now, you, not every exceptional transaction is bad necessarily. Because really the problem is, is that when you manipulate news, we are talking in terms of correct news being uh, shared with, with a privileged group, which allows them to speculate. I, can, I may also refer to the problem that sometimes false information is planted <laughs> in order to make money. Fake okay. news. Fake news is planted in order to make money. We've had cases of somebody, I, uh, I'm involved a little in uh, media standards, and there was an instance once where this man said an announcement was made by in one of the channels that such and such company is going to do such and such things, and the stock price went up, and I, may, you know, I, I did this, and then half an hour later say that is not true. Hmm. So we have started to try and enforce standards of disclosure and diligence. You see, one of my problems is this business of this business channels giving stock tips during market hours is prone to abuse because that can be manipulated by somebody in order to manipulate the market. In many countries, it's just not prohibited. It's just not allowed. Not allowed. It's, not prohibited. it's prohibited completely. And here we do that. And, and of course, many of them say that we can't survive if we don't do this. The only guys who watch us are hunters. So I'd say that let SEBI start by monitoring exceptional transactions and then work back as to what this could be due to. Any sharing of actual information by anybody in a company with anybody else which is not public is, I think, uh, an offense under the insider uh, uh, training. It is an offense. It is an offense, it yes. It is an offense and it has to be prosecuted. I happen to be on the board of one company, and in that company, I do not get information on the quarterly uh, results, except on the day it is going to be announced. I have no advance information. It's only then that they make it available to us. So I think companies must enforce a certain standard also. So as far as WhatsApp, I don't see this issue as an issue. After all, if I can tap, if, if I can get information, if I make a phone call to you and give you information, uh, that can be monitored, and that is monitored. You, we have a famous case, it was done, and the man uh, 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 went to jail. Now, it seems to me, what's the difference between a WhatsApp message and a phone call? If I have the right as a government to get uh, information about a phone call, it seems to me I can claim the right to get uh, information about any WhatsApp message which is exchanged uh, for reasons which are illegal. For reasons which are illegal. So sure. I would say this is something we must tackle because now with the ownership of the stock market, stocks widening, many young people, independent people investing in stocks, we must ensure that this is a market which is a fair, open and transparent market and not manipulated. Insider trading is a terrible problem in India. Manipulation of markets by operators is a big pro problem, uh, and so on. We always have this thing, you know, oh, the bears are taking over, the bulls are taking over. Nobody should take over. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, uh, uh, Mr. Patacharya, at what level does this leak take place, and who's usually involved? Well, you know, uh, obviously, uh, if this uh, information as the SEBI uh, inquiry shows that the results uh, that uh, were finally made public to the stock exchanges and the results that were made available to the select user groups on the WhatsApp uh, platform were more or less similar, then it is very clear that uh, the company, uh, somebody in the company uh, must be involved. So the company has a lot of explanation to do in my view. So, uh, the, the, so, so the, therefore the SEBI's first uh, port of call or the first, uh, the, the persons who need to be examined is the companies, the company executives, the company management. And explanations so they, have explanation been demanded by been demanded as well. And yes. they are giving that. Yeah. And what I was raising the issue is that this is not just a, a question of uh, uh, taking action against the company, 
what do you do when you want to establish that that uh, that chain that how this information was leaked the problem with new technology like whatsapp uh, is that these servers don't reside in india so therefore you have to have uh, uh, multilateral arrangements with different countries where these servers are residing um, and so that you have access the enforcement agencies in india whether they are in the lo economic laws or they are in the stock market laws like the sebi must have access to those servers you know this issue came up recently as well where the cabinet committee decided to do something about it where they said that these companies should have their servers within india itself Absolutely. so that they can this take control with regard control. to the payment banks yes all the payment uh, banks have been given time till september this year that by which time they must have their servers in india or they may have a, a duplicate server which the government or the the regulators can access so therefore and today it is a payment bank their servers and right now sebi's access to whatsapp and their servers and to sh to know where they are actually who sent that message originally how did it originate now this is not easy to get now if it is only a text message sms which 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 goes on the telecom network uh it is easier to track because right. telecom companies are all registered here they uh, come under the indian telecommunication act sure. which is fairly fairly stringent and therefore it's not be difficult but when it comes on the internet uh, backbone it is transferred through the whatsapp then it gets out of a little bit of your hands and therein you need multilateral arrangements with different countries right. you need to engage with these companies to create servers and may allow those servers to be accessed by indian authorities yeah. sure you know uh, eventually what's going to happen to this probe uh, mr desa and if someone's found guilty what's likely to happen i would say that if the people who are found guilty are at the top of the company i'd go to the extreme step of releasing the fellows you cannot allow this period and uh, if it is lower down then you would expect the company to take stern action including dismissing these people otherwise you would say do this you, is the hold the threat do you blacklist the company as well yeah well blacklist is a different story but uh, 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 delisting amounts to that which means that stocks can't be traded in the right. market i would say we must be firm and strong when it comes to this issue of getting information you know one of the things i would try is uh, since most of these servers are in the united states i said let me apply sec rules i said okay you follow sec and sec rules are far tougher than ours ah yes you no know, if they if any of these guys were to do this in the united states they'd be in jail they'd yeah, be right. in jail right you know so i'd say oh, all i'm asking is that you implement uh, the, the, what you would do in the united states uh, as far as my country is concerned so there's a way around for everything is what you're suggesting uh, remains to be seen what happens be in the near tough, future be tough be tough be okay tough. Okay, that's the bottom line. Be tough and take action when it is needed, is what Mr. Desai is suggesting right now. Thank you to both my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us.